Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Four core, eight thread CPUs, are they dead for gaming? If the internet is to be believed, or at least certain parts of it, four core, eight thread CPUs should be thrown directly into the trash because so many inexpensive six and eight core CPU options exist. Hold on, not so fast. Today, we are going to compare four core, eight thread CPUs against six core, 12 thread CPUs in a variety of games, both benchmarks and live gameplay to see whether or not you really need six cores to play current modern games. On March 2nd, 2017, AMD launched Ryzen 7 and forever changed the PC landscape. No longer content to be stuck with four core, eight thread processors for a decade, consumers now had access to eight core, 16 thread CPUs for less money than the price of Intel's flagship four core, eight thread 7700K. A few months later, AMD launched Ryzen 5 the 16 and 1600X 6-core 6 12-thread processors bringing in affordable mid-range CPU to the marketplace, and that's what we're going to be focused on today. Intel responded to this by increasing their flagship CPU to 6 cores and 12 threads with the i7 8700K, more expensive but faster than Ryzen 5. AMD was first to 6 cores on the consumer desktop. Actually, in fairness, Intel was first with 6-core 12-thread CPUs on retail available chips, but we're looking at the high-end desktop platform there, the i7-5820K, the i7-6800K on the X299 platform, and then Sandy Bridgie and Ivy Bridgie before that on X79, but those were not widely adopted, were far more expensive and not at all mainstream, unlike the amazing value of Ryzen 5. Fast forward to 2019 and you can now buy a brand new Ryzen 5 1600 in the box with a cooler for $100, even less on eBay. So why would anybody use a four core, eight thread CPU when six cores and 12 threads are so inexpensive? The simple answer is they're not obsolete. I'm not recommending you buy one new, but if you still have one, that's what today's video is about. What can and cannot do in late 2019. This brings us back to are six core CPUs required to play games today at the end of 2019? No, they are not. However, it is worth noting that there is a very big difference between required and very nice to have. For example, you are not required to use an SSD as a boot drive in 2019. You absolutely can continue to use hard drives only. But honestly, how many of you out there still boot windows to a hard drive? Okay, all of you with your hands up, please put them down and stop that. 120 gigabyte basic SSDs for a Windows boot drive are under $20. There's no reason to suffer through that experience. Once you've gone SSD, frankly, you never go back. But it doesn't affect your frame rates. It doesn't make your computer faster, but it makes it a whole lot nicer to use. Six cores is not all about FPS or the benchmark numbers. It's about the quality of experience in new and modern games. This can be very challenging to show on YouTube. YouTube videos are just playing at 60 frames per second at a nice smooth pace, and you're not seeing the various stutters and micro interruptions that occur when you have fewer cores and fewer threads. Benchmark charts are very flat. There's no real depth of information to them besides some basic numbers, and it doesn't really reflect necessarily the real world experience of playing modern games. Breakpoint is indeed broken on four core, four thread CPUs. I covered this in a previous video, but if you look at the benchmark results here and even the video footage that I'm gonna show you, you might very well be tempted to say four cores and eight threads is all you need to play Breakpoint and it's wonderful and great across the entire experience. Let's just say that may not be the case. Having experienced it both ways, the difference is not in frame rate, the difference is in feel of the game. When you press the WASD keys, how long of a delay is there before your character actually starts moving? How fast is your character to fire, to reload? How fast does the map open and close? How fast is your drone launch? These are the kind of small experiences that really don't show up in charts and really don't show up in a video either. But when you actually have hands on the keyboard, it really comes across in the experience on the game. If you've only ever used four core eight thread chips, you might be tempted to say, it plays fine, what are you talking about? 
That's because you're used to it. But once you upgrade to a better CPU with, and it starts removing those little micro lags and micro stutters out of the game, you're gonna go, wow, that's a much better experience. I really don't like having to say, take my word for it. I wanna show you, prove to you, give you evidence of everything that I'm claiming in my videos. But in this case, it's not a frame time graph or a frame rate or even frame pacing issue. It is an input responsiveness and controllability issue. And the only way to really experience that is to physically put your hands on the keyboards and actually play the game live in real time. So unfortunately, all I can really say is take my word for it. On the flip side, you have games like Overwatch, which I will show you here in this video. The six core CPU legitimately does show a higher frame rate than the four core CPU. And yet there were zero controllability issues whatsoever. And unless you have a very high refresh rate monitor, it really doesn't matter because they were both equally easy to play. For our testing today, the CPUs were run at stock speeds. 3.6 gigahertz on all the cores on the 1500X versus 3.7 gigahertz on all the cores for the 1600X. We're using the ASUS ROG Strix X470-F motherboard with 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 MHz CL16 RAM. We have the Scythe Mugen 5 aftermarket tower cooler installed, and we're using the Gigabyte RX 5700 XT gaming overclocked graphics card. Very nice, almost overkill for these CPUs, but it does provide enough performance at a reasonable price point to allow us to compare these chips. I'll have more thoughts and my conclusion on this set of tests after the benchmarks, so please consider sticking around for that. But without further ado, let's get to the benchmarks. Our first game today is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, everybody's favorite high quality benchmark of 2019. Well, maybe not, but it at least demonstrates what happens when you try to play at 1080p high detail with very nice graphics cards and not so nice CPUs. Zen 2 cores here would really be helpful, or Intel chips. You could overclock either of these, but it wouldn't make a huge, huge difference. Take a look at the graphics card utilization. Absolutely terrible because we are absolutely bottlenecked by both of these CPUs mostly due to per core performance more than anything else. However, take a look at the total utilization of the 1500X. We are well north of 50%. Remember, thanks to SMT, otherwise known as hyperthreading, anything over 50% is into the extra threads, which aren't real cores. On the 1600X, we are far more using the real cores as opposed to the SMT cores. And so not only do we have a performance uplift, but it's just gonna be a better overall gaming experience. Now these charts here are gonna include the 1300X, but I'm not showing you the footage again. I've covered that in a previous video. So here I am including it for the charts, but I'm only showing you the footage of the 1500X and the 1600X top and bottom to allow you to see the numbers in very easy to read detail and watch them in real time. 56 to 51 to 60 might seem an oddity since the 1300X and the 1500X are both 3.6 gigahertz four core chips with the 1500X having hyper threading, but it's Assassin's Creed Odyssey and we're using an overpowered GPU. And frankly, this, this particular game and this particular benchmark is not as repeatable as I would like. It goes up and down the more you run it. I probably won't continue using Assassin's Creed Odyssey for that very reason. Moving on to Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Now these are two different maps, and this is also the last time I'm going to do that. When we take a look at the Ryzen 7 1700X and do the generational comparisons, these will all be on the same map. That was sloppiness on my part, and I apologize, but of course everything takes time, and so going back to retest, just be aware that different maps are going to affect the results in different ways, so take this one with a grain of salt. On the top of the screen, we have the 1500X in Chaos Domination. And on the bottom of the screen, we have the 1600X on Nuketown. Still multiplayer, still very challenging. I engaged and died and played and died and did more dying because, well, it's me and this is not, I'm, I'm not 21 anymore with super duper fast reflexes. And so it's always challenging playing these sorts of games. But I did give it my all and I got stuck in there and uh, certainly tried shooting as many of them as possible. And I even got a couple of kills, you know? <laughs> if you sh throw enough stuff against the wall, you'll eventually hit something. In any case, the CPU usage is really what we're looking at here. Take a look at the fact that we are well north of 
percent on the 1500x where we're south of 50 percent on the 1600x at least a lot of the time so in that regard you're going to get faster performance and smoother performance with the extra cores because modern online multiplayer first person shooters tend to love lots of cores again 1300x was tested on a different map that was actually in the zombie mode the 94 there, ignore it because of that. 79 to 104 between the 4-core and the 6-core chip, that's more interesting. Across all of my gameplay experience, which admittedly is not hundreds of hours, I do notice that 6-core 12-thread chips are smoother and more responsive with fewer dips than 4-core 8-thread chips are. So if you're a serious gamer that likes to play Call of Duty multiplayer or Battlefield multiplayer, which this is sort of a stand-in for, then yeah, the days of the 4-core 8-thread chip are over for this sort of thing. Need versus want is a very key thing. I am sure that most of you who are familiar with Counter-Strike Global Offensive would say, this game does not remotely need a 6-core 12-thread chip. In fact, that's a complete waste for this sort of thing. I understand that thinking, but hold on a second, you might be surprised. First of all, if you are a casual player, then not only is four cores and eight threads enough, four cores and four threads, or frankly two cores and four threads are enough. If all you care about is 60 frames per second average, if you just want to play and have some fun, if you couldn't remotely care about rankings, well, then you've got your answer. But if you are competitive... First of all, you probably wouldn't want to be on a first-gen Ryzen ship. You'd want something faster because, you know, 500 frames per second for the win, right? But there is a performance uplift on the 1600X, surprisingly enough. Now, it's not a huge one, but 183 to 213 frames per second on the average, 100 to 125 on the 1% low, and impressively, 31 to 77 on the 0.1% low, well, the 1600X is indeed faster. Now, it does have a whole 100 megahertz clock speed advantage. Raise your hand if you think 3.6 versus 3.7 gigahertz is responsible for these numbers. If any of you raised your hand, put your hand down, you're wrong. It is not. That is an, a completely trivial rounding error difference. These numbers are due to the improved smoothness, the extra resources the 1600X has, the transitions from characters, the transitions when you respawn at the beginning, it all does add up and make a difference. If you're a competitive player, more cores does help improve the overall experience. Far Cry New Dawn, at least for the built-in benchmark, is more of a graphics card test than it is a CPU test. We do see higher CPU loading here for sure, but this is an open world game and I played the first one, the Far Cry 5. Uh, I frankly got bored with it after a dozen hours or so and I just never got into Far Cry New Dawn, the full price DLC to Far Cry 5. Good job, you, uh, Ubisoft. In any case, it is faster on the 1600X. And in the open world, similar to Ghost Recon Breakpoint and the Division 2 and other such games, you're going to find a larger difference. I'll just reiterate my position again. If this is the sort of game that you want to play, if new modern open world games and upcoming games, if you want to play Cyberpunk 77, if you want to play Watch Dogs Legion, four cores, eight threads, we'll play them. I have no doubt four cores, eight threads will play them. But that doesn't mean it's going to play them well. You know, there's, there's a big, big difference between works and enjoyable, awesome, nice experience. 74 frames per second on the 1500X versus 83 on the 1600X. 55 and 62 on the 1% low and 52 and 57 on the 0.1% low. This is where you kind of have to take this with a grain of salt and realize that a built-in benchmark is not the open world engaging in combat with 57 enemies and... Get the 1600X, or better yet, a 1700X if this is what you're doing. Fortnite, everybody's favorite battle royale game. Playing in Team Rumble, getting stuck in with a lot of combat and a lot of building and a lot of shooting here. Now, this game does show an improvement in terms of smoothness between 4-core four 4-thread four and 4-core four 8-thread chips. It did not show the same follow-up with six core 12 thread chips. If you're playing Fortnite, if this is your jam, then a four core eight thread chip is currently the ideal, unless they add battle modes or change the game in the future, which online multiplayer games are want to do over time. But in terms of present day gameplay, six cores is nice, 
but it's not necessary for this unless you want to live stream. And that's a different topic, which maybe should be covered in a separate video. But if you're interested in streaming this game, even with GPU encoding, not using CPU encoding for Twitch, then yes, I would strongly recommend six cores so that OBS and everything else has something to run with. 149 versus 168 on the average, that's minor. That's almost a rounding error given that it's live gameplay. And of course, the benchmarks and the maps are going to be a little bit different. The 1% low and the 0.1% low are effectively the same. But notice the huge drop off in the 1% low on the 1300X. That's why I wouldn't use a four core four thread chip if you can all avoid it, because there's a bunch more stuttering going on in the game, whereas it's much smoother if you have the extra threads. Ghost Recon Breakpoint, everybody's favorite follow-up to Ghost Recon Wildlands. Well, not everybody's, but this game is fun and gorgeous. If you love it, great. If you don't, fair enough. But I've got 40 hours into this thing now, and I've played it on enough different configurations at enough different resolutions. I'm getting pretty comfortable talking about where the boundary boxes of performance on this thing are. First of all, four cores, four threads, absolute garbage. Don't even think about it. It runs. It works. It plays. You could. Oh my goodness, that's awful. I just know. And that's not even me being spoiled with cool hardware. It truly is an atrocious experience. Four cores, eight threads, however, is at least playable. It's decent. It's functional. If I had no other choice, if, if the only option was four cores, eight threads, or zero... Would I play it on that? Yeah, probably. If that's all I ever knew, I'd get used to it. One, one thing that's not often taken into account in these videos is you get used to a certain level of performance and you just sort of adapt to it and get used to the controls and get used to the responsiveness and you start to lead the game and you, you do the best you can. But having played this on better machines, oh boy, if this game is your jam and you're still on a 4-core 8-thread chip and I don't care if it's a 7700K at 5 gigahertz. You need an upgrade, or at least you want an upgrade. Uh, need is a relative term. I would want an upgrade, that's for sure. I'm going to discuss this extensively on the Ryzen 7 comparison as well, because while it doesn't have a huge improvement there, spoiler alert, it actually does help, at least in heavy combat scenes there. If you want to live stream, then it's absolutely necessary. But at the moment, if you want to play all current games smoothly with fast responsiveness, then 6 cores, 12 threads is a nice middle ground between price and capability. It's just that uh, when the next Ghost Recon game comes out, I'll bet that it will uh, sort of shift the CPUs one notch down and put you in the position of this being acceptable, but 8 cores, 16 threads being ideal. 69 frames per second average on the 1500X versus 73 frames per second average on the 1600X. Whoa, wait a second. Didn't I just go on and on about the six cores being a much better experience? Look at the 1% and 0.1% lows. They're actually better on the 1500X. Clearly tech is on something and has no idea what he's talking about, right? Wrong. As I noted earlier in the talking head portion of the video, and if you fast forwarded through that and skipped it, go back and watch it, shame on you. The reality is these are frame rate numbers. They are not game responsiveness numbers. Pressing the WASD keys, feeling the responsiveness of the game, how fast the, the gun fires when you press the trigger, how fast the map opens and closes, how fast it quick travels, all of these little details add up in little micro bits throughout the game. Going from four cores, eight threads to six cores, 12 threads is a noticeable real world experience that is not remotely reflected on that chart. If you've ever believed me in anything I ever say, it's this, side by side, without the benchmarks running, you can feel a difference between these two configurations. Overwatch is the complete opposite. We genuinely do get a frame rate uplift with the 6 core 12 thread chip and way more than the 100 megahertz could possibly indicate. Of course, to be sure that these are different battles, but it really is faster on the 1600X. Why? Well, welcome to modern online shooters where performance is all over the place. But if you look at the CPU usage on the 1500X, you'll notice that Overwatch is using more than 50%. Overwatch will use more than six threads, more than six cores. A four core eight thread is enough in the sense that it's smooth because it will give you playable experience, 
But because it's going over 50%, those extra threads aren't real cores, and so they're having to share execution units. On the 1600X below, basically all the game's threads get their own cores, making for a faster, nicer overall experience. Except, I can't tell the difference between these two in real-world gameplay. As I noted earlier in the video, I'm playing on a 60Hz monitor, so the true frame rate isn't apparent to me anyway. But... Control input is the same. There's no lagging control input on either side. The mouse, the firing, the, the using your ultimate, everything feels the same. I don't feel a controllability or input difference between these two CPUs. And again, that's not something that the charts show very well, or frankly at all. 166 frames per second on the 1500X versus 198 on the 1600X. 108 to 133 at 1% and 68 to 94 at 0.1%. There is definitely a frame rate improvement across the board with the 6-core 12 thread chip. If you're a competitive player, then yes, more performance makes sense. I have to say, however, that just playing the game, I couldn't feel a difference. When I pressed my WASD keys, when I fired, when I used my shield, when I activated my abilities, it didn't feel any different in terms of input lag or input controllability. And of course, the frame rate was the same from my point of view because of the monitor. So it's a completely opposite result of Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the third in the rebooted series. The interesting thing about this game is that unlike many of the others, the graphics card is being pushed nearly to the limit. Take a look at the usage there. It's not 100%, but it definitely is higher than on many of the other benchmarks I've shown you here. If these were newer, faster CPUs, Zen 2, for example, we actually would be running into more of a graphics card bottleneck than we are here. But again, I was trying to use a mid-range card, so the 5700 XT it was. Yes, I know, 400 hours from mid-range sounds silly. Look at the CPU usage. Even the 1600X is at 80, there's 83%, 78%, 90%. Eight cores, 16 threads is not wasted on games like this, and it's really the future. If you don't currently own a CPU and you wanna play not only this Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but the next Tomb Raider game, do yourself a favor and skip all this and just get yourself an eight core 16 thread chip. 101 to 111, that is not a big, big difference in terms of average frame rate, 10%. It's easy to say, well, it's fine, it plays fine. Of course it does. It The frame rates are technically fine on almost anything. But that doesn't make it controllable when Laura's trying to jump from object to object and the timing in this game where you're avoiding obstacles is very important. Look at the 1% lows, 46 to 67. That's a much larger percentage jump. And when this, considering this is just a built-in benchmark, just like Ghost Recon Breakpoint and some others, you're going to find that in the real world of playing this game, the 6-core 12 thread chip is a far superior experience to the four core eight thread chip. I'm just including the benchmark for steep because this is running long as it is. Yes, that drop off is weird. And yes, I ran the benchmark several times. Losing 20% of your frame rates on the six core chip. I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but I did run this multiple times and it was fairly repetitive. This game, I and I've, and I've played it a little bit, doesn't really care either way. The Division Two, this game is far better optimized than Ghost Recon Breakpoint is, or many of the other Ubisoft titles. I genuinely have to say that playing this on the 4-core, 8-thread processor was remarkably good. It's not the fastest. It's not ideal. There are definitely places where there's some slowdown. There's definitely some places where the frame rate hitches a little bit. The loading time in the game is longer. This game is very good about using all the cores for quick travel across the map and, and loading you know various places, but it's playable. And I really want to emphasize that point that it was smooth and controllable. It's not perfect. If you've got the money or if you've got an opportunity to get a six core 12 thread chip, 
it's better on that, but it is not in any way, shape, or form unplayable on the four-core eight-thread chip. And certainly, and this is a very fair statement, because it does make a difference, if you had a faster four-core eight-thread chip, if you had an i7-7700K, even at stock, which is 4.2 gigahertz on all the cores, then it would be even better than this because, well, more clock speed and more instructions per clock cycle would just give a better experience. But on a 1500X, yeah, I'd play the Division 2. 115 frames per second average on the 1500X versus 141 on the 1600X. 75 and 94 on the 1% lows, and, well, pay no attention to the 0.1% lows because in this particular game, it takes but one stutter and one jump and whatever, and boom, you've got that. So it is what it is. But yes, I'm sure those numbers are correct, at least for the benchmarks that I ran. The 1500X is fine. Frankly, the 1300X is fine. I mean, it was completely playable even on four cores, four threads. There's more stutter. There's more jumpiness. It takes a lot longer to quick travel and to load screens. And when you pull up your inventory and do stuff, there's a little bit of lag and stutter in there. But yeah, it's completely playable. You could. More cores and more threads just gives you more future and more performance, and it's a nicer experience. Last but certainly not least is Total War Three Kingdoms. This is the sort of game that you're going to want the six-core chip for. Take a look at the performance difference. 72 to 92, 60, 36 to 53, and 30 to 47. And this is, of course, in the game's built-in benchmark. Get into real large battles, and you're really going to be happy that you've got a better CPU. That was a ton of benchmarks. Two gold stars to all of you who actually watched all of them and didn't fast forward. I'm honestly not thrilled with how this testing turned out with recordings of gameplay footage and benchmark charts relative to the actual experience of actually testing and playing the games on this particular setup. It's one thing to take a look at objective information like frame rate numbers and video footage and to draw a conclusion from that. It's quite another to take a subjective evaluation where I'm just standing here saying, take my word for it because the 1600X was much nicer than the 1500X. But in general, it was. It just doesn't show very much in those charts and in that video footage. I picked the first generation of Ryzen CPUs for a reason. They represent the first time that 6-core 12-thread chips entered mainstream. They also represent a great upgrade opportunity for anybody who jumped on board way back at the beginning of the launch in 2017. You can take a Ryzen 3 1200, a Ryzen 5 1500X, or even a Ryzen 5 1600X, and upgrade it to, say, a Ryzen 7 3700X, and get far more performance without having to upgrade your motherboard, RAM, reinstall Windows, or do anything else. Check one in the win box for AMD for that. At the end of the day, the i7-7700K will post higher benchmark results, higher frame rate charts, than the Ryzen 5 1600X will. But in general, in newer games like Breakpoint, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and The Division 2, the Ryzen 5 1600X will be a smoother experience in terms of actual gameplay, even if the total frame rate is not quite as high as the Intel chip is. If you don't play the newest games, then a four-core, eight-thread CPU is honestly fine. Overwatch, CSGO, World of Tanks, World of Warships, those games don't care and will run just fine on four cores and eight threads. You don't need to upgrade. Keep that thing for many years to come. But if you want to play the latest and greatest games such as Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Division 2, the upcoming uh, Watch Dogs Legion, the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077, if those games are what you're interested in, yeah, it's time to start looking at an upgrade from four cores to more. Coming soon, I will be doing a 6-core versus 8-core comparison using these numbers. Do you really need an 8-core CPU to play most games today? No, you don't. But if you want to live stream, it's definitely worth considering or do content creation. It's also worth noting that the price of 8-core CPUs is not that much higher than 6-core. A Ryzen 7 2700 is around $150 to $170 at the moment, about 50% more than a Ryzen 5 2600, but you get 25% more cores and 25% more threads, and that gives you some future proofing, which you might appreciate two or three years from now. 
Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you love it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with a big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, you know where the comment section is. Links to everything here to Amazon, Newegg, and eBay in the video description below. Those are affiliate links. Shopping while using those supports the channel at no extra cost to you. If you like our content and you'd like some early access content, please consider supporting us on Patreon or Floatplane. Patrons get access to the filming scripts we use such as these right here, early, as well as the benchmark charts in image format. And then Floatplane subscribers get early access to these videos. As soon as they're done being edited and rendered, I upload them for immediate publish on Floatplane. So if you're able to support the channel, please consider checking those out in the video description below. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.